Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall, in the last tutorial we just set up some boilerplate code to get a window up and running and a game loop running. And I did realize that we actually had an error there. Uh, inside of this game loop we have update time. We should be using delta time, which is why these numbers were so big. So, And then if we run this again, then it'll show how much time has actually elapsed in seconds since the last frame. So with that out of the way, now we can actually jump into the next part of this series, which is adding the key listener and the mouse listener. If you haven't checked out the last tutorial, you should definitely do that real quick. So let's get into this and actually set up a mouse listener and key listener real quick. Okay, so inside of our source, we're gonna actually come into here and let's go into Jade and add a new class and we will call this ML for mouse listener. Okay, and this is just gonna simply extend mouse adapter which is a Java class that is used in Java Aunt. And we can extend this and actually get window events and stuff registered uh, from our window. We're sort of going to keep track of it ourselves, just so that uh, we don't have to set up a event system, make it a little bit easier so that we can pull this instead. So we'll have a few variables that we will use to keep track of things. We'll say mouse pressed equals false. We'll have another Boolean, mouse dragged, equals false. And if you recall from the last tutorials, this is a little bit different. We just had mouse pressed and what mouse button was pressed. We're actually going to do a little bit more complicated just so that we can determine whether they're dragging or pressing, which will be helpful when we're actually building our uh, level editor and adding some of that functionality. So then we'll have a couple floats. X initialize those to zero. Y initialize that to minus, minus one. And these will keep track of the mouse's current position on the screen. And then we'll have another couple uh, variables, dx, which is going to be also minus one. And then y, which is also dy, which will also be minus one. And these will keep track of how much distance has been traveled since the last frame if the mouse is being dragged right now. Okay. So then we're going to have to override some methods. We will override mouse pressed. So you type in override and then public void mouse pressed. This takes in a mouse event, mouse event, and then hit alt enter to import that real quick. And then we'll go down here. And so then we'll just say this dot mouse pressed equals true. And we'll say this dot mouse button, which is another variable we need to add. So we'll have one more variable inside here, public uh, int mouse button and we'll initialize this to minus one there we go okay and then we'll say this dot mouse button equals mouse event dot button get button there we go okay and then next one we want is the mouse released method so we'll say public override uh, public void mouse released mouse event mouse event and then we will just set this dot mouse pressed equals false. Uh, we have that new variable mouse dragged. If they were dragging, we also want to set mouse dragged to false because it's no longer being dragged. And then we also want to set this dot dx to zero. So if they were just dragging it, they're no longer dragging it, then uh, clearly dx and dy would be zero because there's no space to drag if you're not dragging the mouse. Okay. So that's why we're doing that. It'll make more sense too as we go on. And if this is scaring you too, how fast I'm going, I promise I will slow down. This is just some stuff that I've done and covered in previous videos, which I'll have links to uh, that you can watch to see it in a little bit more detail. Okay. And then we'll have another one. Uh, this is a new method, public void mouse moved. And so this, or no, this one isn't new. We did use this one, but we're going to be using another new one after this. So we'll just say this dot X equals mouse event dot get X. And then this dot y equals mouse event dot get y. This event is called whenever the mouse has moved on the window. And then we'll have one more public void. This one's mouse drag. This is the new one. So uh, it does exactly what you would think it to. Every time the user is clicking and holding and they're dragging the mouse on the window, it calls this one. So we'll say this dot mouse dragged equals true. And then we'll say this dot dx equals mouse event dot get x. So where is it currently? minus this dot x where is it when they initially started dragging so mouse moved will only be called if they are not dragging the mouse so as soon as they start dragging the mouse this will retain the position that they had when they first started dragging 
which will also make sense once we actually begin to use this. So then we'll say this dot dy equals mouse event dot get y minus this dot y. And you could of course set this up a little bit differently if you want dx and dy to behave differently and all these different things. Uh, with the way we're going to be using them, this will be the easiest. Um, so let's hook that up real quick and just see what it does. We'll go to our window class. And then inside of our initialization method, we'll actually register it to the window so that the window knows who to call if there's any of these events are happening. So right here, right after set default close operation, we will say this dot add mouse listener. And this will be the window dot mouse listener, which right now is void. So we'll go up here and we're going to create a public static mouse listener mouse listener equals new uh, ml and we'll actually change this to ml there we go and let's actually not make this static since you will be able to get an actual instance of the window and we'll actually initialize this inside of this window so i'm referencing my code which is why sometimes i will be making changes to it and so i may write something and then later decide you know that's probably not the best way to do it so We'll just initialize it in here. Okay. And then instead of window.mouse listener, we'll just say mouse listener. Then we will say this.add mouse motion listener, mouse listener. And the mouse motion listener is just registering like movement and everything. This is registering clicking and dragging. So with all that in place, let's see if it works real quick. Um, we will just go up into our update method. And then we will say if mouse listener dot mouse pressed uh, let's take out this old code too then we'll say um, system dot out dot print line mouse pressed so if we run this real quick you click and you should see some text down there but we're not seeing that so let's see what's going on real quick okay so it does seem to be working fine it's just really weird if we're not actually printing it out beforehand it doesn't work right if anybody knows why that is, um, please let me know in the comments below. That'd be helpful. But so if we click now, it says mouse pressed. And if we don't have this print statement, then nothing happens. So if we go back and no matter how much you click, nothing happens. So a little bit weird, but it's working. Um, if this bug comes back up again when we're developing, then we'll try and see what's going on there too. And then let's just go here real quick and I'll say uh, print out DX so that you can see what I mean by what dx and dy will hold. So if I move my mouse to the right, notice how the numbers are slowly getting bigger. And if I move it back to the left, uh, they get smaller. And so all dx is containing is the amount that the mouse has moved in the x position from its original position when I started dragging, which is nice to have uh, as we'll see in some certain scenarios. Okay, next we'll create the key listener real quick. So we'll go up here and then we'll have a kl, which is a key listener. And let's go ahead and register it down here too. So we'll say this to add key listener, and then this will be the key listener. And then let's go implement that class real quick. We'll go to Jade, hit new Java class, and this will be KL, which stands for key listener. And then this one is just going to extend key adapter right up here. And then it's going to implement key listener. So these are both just some standard Java classes that we can use that we get from Java. Aunt. So we hit that and it imports it and then we'll import this class as well. And then we can override a few methods that we can use. We'll have a private Boolean key pressed, which will contain which, which uh, keyboard keys are currently being pressed. And this will be a new array with 128 codes, which is the ASCII character set. Okay, and then we'll hit override. We'll say public void key typed. And let's actually, we don't need this one. We don't need to override this one because we won't be using it, but we'll have public void key pressed. And this one will just say key pressed. And this takes in a key event. So we'll say key event E. And then let's import that real quick. So alt enter. Then we'll say key pressed E dot get key code equals true. And then we'll override one more method and we'll say public void key released key event E and we'll say key pressed 
e dot get key code equals false. So this will just let us know which keys are pressed and which keys are not. And then we'll have one more static method or it will make this inherent. So we'll say boolean is key pressed. And we'll say int key code return key pressed key code. And that should be it. And so now if we go back to our main class and then just test this one real quick, we'll go oh, into our window class and then we'll just scroll down to the update method and we'll say system dot dot print line is uh, key listener dot is key pressed. And we'll say key event dot VK enter. And so we'll import that real quick. Alt enter. And so when I hit the enter key, it should show true. And so we get a null pointer exception here. Let's see what this is pointing to. And it's saying key listener. We never initialized it up here. So we'll say this dot key listener equals a new KL. And we just need one of those. Okay, so let's run this one more time. And when I hit enter, you'll see that all the falses changed to true. Okay, so we have basic key listener, basic mouse listener, that's all good. Let's go ahead and set up one more thing real quick, which is the abstract scene class that we'll need. And this will just be sort of the different inheriting uh, classes. So we'll have like a level scene, a level editor scene, and the window will update just a scene class, which is the base. So let's go into Jade. We'll create a new class and we'll call this scene. And so this class will sort of hold the basic methods that all different scenes will need. So we'll give it a name. We may never use this, but it might be helpful for debugging purposes. And then we'll have a, um, for now, we'll just have a public void scene. And this will take in a name. So then we'll just say this.name equals name. Then we'll have a few abstract methods. And this class is actually going to be an abstract class because we will be having some classes inheriting from this. So it's going to have an abstract void in it. This will initialize public abstract void update. This will take in delta time and this will update the scene. And then we'll have a public abstract void draw graphics 2D G2. And this will be what we'll use to draw onto the screen. Okay, and then we'll go back to our window class. Well, first let's create the first scene that we'll inherit from this. We'll just call this our level editor scene. Okay, and then we'll say this one extends the scene class. And then we'll get a error here. We'll say implement the methods. This will implement all these methods for us real quick. And then we'll just go into public level editor scene and just give it its own uh, little method. We'll give it a string name and then we'll call super dot, uh, excuse me, super dot scene and then we'll call name. And this will just call the supers uh, constructor function function just in case we put anything in there that we may need. Okay. And then we'll go back to our window class. And then inside of our window class, we will have a method in here called change scene. So we'll say public void change scene int scene. This will tell us which scene we need to change to. And then we'll just have a switch on the scene. Case zero, we will build our level editor scene. So we'll say, uh, let's go up here and create a private scene, current scene equals null. And then inside of here, we will say current scene equals new level editor scene. And then we'll just call this level editor. And then we'll say break. So this should switch the scene to the level editor scene, which will be good. And then inside of our update method, we'll go scroll down here. We will call update on our current scene. So we'll say current scene to update DT, which should call the update method on whichever scene we're currently rendering at this moment. So then if we go into our level editor scene real quick, we'll just say system.out.println in here to make sure this is all working as it should. We'll just say like in here, just to signify that we are inside of this scene. If we run this, we get a null pointer exception once again. So let's go here real quick, see what's going on. It says current scene. Oh, we never changed the scene. <laughs> So inside of our initialization function, we should say change scene zero. That way we change it. And then let's also add in a default case in here. Uh, default 
just in case we don't know what it is, uh, we'll say system dot error. No, we'll just say system dot out dot print line. Uh, do not know what this scene is. And then we'll just say current scene equals null, which will cause an error. And then this will cause it to error out. And we'll be like, oh, we don't know what this scene is. Okay. So let's run this one more time. And then you notice it's it's printing out in here, which means that we are in fact updating this level editor scene. Okay, so we've added a simple key listener, simple mouse listener. In the next tutorial, what we're gonna do is add a simple double buffer technique to add some double buffering uh, so that we can draw to the screen and everything. And then we'll add, uh, actually implement the draw method that we have on our scene class right now, which is currently empty, but we'll fix that up and everything. And then after that, we should start actually implementing some of the level editor things. I'm debating which direction I'm going to go first, whether we're going to do things like serialization and everything, or whether we're just going to jump into it and start like sprite sheet loading and all that stuff. So that's to be decided, but we'll see where it goes. If you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks. See you.